Hey there, today I'm going to show you how I make my vegan meatloaf recipe. For more information, head over to my blog, craftyepicurean.com. The first step in the recipe is to chop up all the veggies. So that's the carrots, two carrots, an onion, five cloves of garlic, and three stalks of celery, all diced. And that's ready to go into the food processor, which we will see in a moment. But before I do that, I just want to show you how I like to drain my chickpeas. So we're going to be using two cans of chickpeas and I like to do this step by having a sieve over a jug and then pouring it straight over. There's no need to rinse the chickpeas as some recipes call for and I like using a jug because then I can retain the aquafaba for another recipe another day. Um, once that's drained a little bit, uh, it's okay if they're a bit moist, I pour them. I just pour them straight into the food processor like that. And I'm just going to do the second can and do the same process again. Main purpose is to drain the chickpeas just to get most of the moisture out. And of course I like to use these organic chickpeas from Series Organics. I particularly like it how it has a pull tab on the top so that's super convenient than having to get a can opener out of the drawer. So I'll set that to the side while I saute the vegetables. So to a medium heat on a pan, I add two, about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And I'm about to add the diced up veggies that I showed you before. So that's the diced carrots, the diced um, celery, the diced onions, and the chopped up garlic. I'm just going to saute those in this pan in a bit of olive oil until all these vegetables have softened. Now I love this recipe, it's really versatile and it's just like a standard meatloaf as you'll see when we get to the end. It can be eaten on its own as a side or in burgers or as a topping for a salad there's quite a few options and just like a normal meatloaf as I'll show you later there is a glaze on the top to keep the meatloaf nice and moist and add a bit of extra tastiness and sort of acts like a gravy as well when you eat it anyway here are the vegetables sauteing away I'm just using a wooden spoon um, I'll come back shortly when they are a bit more softened and here they are, all nicely softened and ready to go into the food processor. Now if you don't like putting hot things straight into your food processor, feel free to wait 10-15 to 15 minutes for this mixture to cool down before adding it. However, it doesn't mind me and I know that I'm going to be pretty quick about it. So I'm just going to get those chickpeas that we put in earlier and add my sautéed vegetables. Another point to make is very soon I'm going to add a whole lot of spices and sauces and I had tablespoon measurements and those tablespoons are 15 ml tablespoons just so you are aware of that. Um, a bonus in this recipe is that it uses ground linseeds which I'm pretty happy about because I accidentally ordered a whole bunch of my series food co-op order when I was meant to order whole linseeds rather than ground linseeds. So I was pretty pleased that I can use them in this recipe. So the first sauce is three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Of course this is vegan, feel free to use standard if you don't have that. Two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Um, then now in this mixture coming up I'm going to have two tablespoons of soy sauce. And in the next ramekin is two tablespoons of ground flax seeds, a tablespoon of vegetable stock, quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper and a tablespoon of dried mixed herbs. And the final ramekin has a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Of course this is a pretty flexible recipe so if that seems too much feel free to change it to match your preferences or tastes. So pop that on your food processor base and pulse it until the mixture is well combined now you can I like to combine it quite a bit um, so it's fairly smooth but with a few lumps so it has a bit of texture you know 
feel free to blitz it to however you like the texture of your meat loaf to be. Um, I quite often pulse it for a while, wait till the mixture is mostly combined, then grab a, a silicon spatula and scrape down the sides before carrying on with further pulsing in the food processor. Just like so. And you'll see that I do leave a few bumps um, behind and it is quite a moist mixture as you can see and that is fine we will be adding some kind of breadcrumbs to later on to combine it and soak up that moisture a bit more now I personally like to fry up slices of this vegan meatloaf sometimes and that will just add a bit of caramelization and a bit of crunch that is once that I mean you know how I like to serve it once it's been made in the oven. Alright so that's blitzed enough to how I like it so I'm just going to put it on my countertop now and add my breadcrumbs. So before I do that I remove the blade out of the food processor. Another way you could do this if you don't mind dirtying another bowl is to transfer the mixture to a large bowl before adding um, the breadcrumbs which I will do shortly but I just like to mix it around a little bit to make sure that it is a good consistency that I like. So you will see that there are still a few lumpies, lumps of carrot and onion and celery that you can see there but that's because I like the texture. And I add about um, a cup and a half of breadcrumbs, again that's up to you if you don't want to put that much or you can put less feel free to do that um, of course you could use gluten free breadcrumbs like rice crumbs and the bonus of doing that is that this will still be a vegan meatloaf if you just use rice crumbs or a, a corn based crumb as well um, the breadcrumbs are just there to soak up any excess moisture and help to bind this vegan meatloaf together. It also means that it's something to soak in all those delicious herbs and spices and sauces that we added earlier. Um, I like to serve this in a vegan burger, my favourite way. This is my favourite way to have this vegan meatloaf. So I have slices, I fry them up as I said before to add that caramelisation and a bit of crunch and then I top it in the burger with some apple coleslaw and a generous spread of olive oil spread. And I generally do that in either normal burger buns or my favourite chai butter buns. Now here I'm about to press it into my loaf tin. I've lined it with some non-stick baking paper so it makes it easy to remove once it's been cooked. And now I'm just going to add the mixture, spoon the mixture, straight into that meatloaf tin or loaf tin and press it down with my silicon spatula. So as you can see it's very pliable and easy to press down and push into the loaf tin. Now you want to push it down and get it into all the corners and nooks and crannies of your loaf tin. And I'm just getting the last bits and I like to you want to try and press it down as hard as you can so that it is dense and um, makes a good loaf and you don't want it to be too crumbly because otherwise when it's cooked and you slice it it will crumble on you and not maintain or hold its slice so give yourself a good chance to make it nice to get a good slice of vegan meatloaf by pressing, by taking the time to press it into the tin. Now you see I've still got mixture in there, I'm just going to fill it all the way up. Now a very cool thing about this tin is that it's got these little silicon handles on the side so they actually stay cool after it's been in the oven, which is pretty neat for this 
baking tin and I quite like it. I've actually got two of these loaf tins that I like to use um, quite often when I'm making loaves of bread in the oven by hand rather than using a bread maker. The recipe is for two loaves of bread so it's quite handy to have two loaf tins sometimes. So here I'm just um, smoothing off the top of this loaf and pressing it down and condensing it as far as I can. And in the background I've got an oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius on Fanbic. And now that I'm happy with the vegan meatloaf and how it has um, been compressed, I'm going to put it in the oven for 10 minutes. So while that's cooking, I'm going to make the apricot glaze, which is going to go on the top. Now the bonus of this is I'm going to be able to use up a good amount of the apricot jelly that I made earlier in the year from my apricots. I use about a quarter of a cup of that apricot jelly I made. You can use apricot jam, apricot jelly or apricot fruit preserve if that's what you've got. But yeah, make sure it's apricot flavoured. It really makes a really cool, nice um, flavour hit on the top of this meatloaf. To that I add a tablespoon of brown sugar, just soft brown sugar. And I've got two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And two tablespoons of light soy sauce. And you want to use apple cider vinegar because of that sweetness of the apple cider vinegar. I quite like it and I think it makes a big difference to this recipe in terms of the glaze. Mix that all together after you've added one teaspoon of paprika, sorry. Mix it all together as once, um, sorry, mix it all together with your spoon or a fork or a whisk until it's well combined. Um, again, feel free to change the recipe to your taste if that seems like too much or not enough. Right, so that's loaf's been in the oven for 10 minutes. I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to pour the apricot glaze we've just mixed together all over the top, as you'll see very shortly. And just pour it off, spoon it over. Make sure you get a spatula out if you don't want to waste it um, and get it all over that top. So this is just like a standard meatloaf where you would have generally a tomato based or tomato sauce based glaze but at the moment I'm off, I'm not eating deadly night shades because it gives me um, eczema on my hands. So I decided to make up this apricot glaze for this meatloaf rather than a tomato based glaze. But yeah, feel free to use your favourite tomato based glaze if that's what you prefer on this vegan meatloaf. I mean that will still keep it vegan. Alright, and then once that's been spread and you're happy with that, and um, pop it back in the oven for 25 minutes and after 25 minutes you have a vegan meatloaf that looks like this which is uber delicious for more information head over to my blog craftyepicurean.com and thanks for watching